I'm not the strongest, most secure person when I'm up there. Um, I definitely have a fear of flying. And things like this are very scary. You know, to the, the stuff you were saying about how he could just depressurize the airplane and in a, in a couple of minutes, you'd be dead. Like, I realize how incredibly rare this is. But just a word from you in, in parting on the safety of air travel and what, what people like me should be remembering when we go up there. Well, I mean, it's, it's often said and 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 usually believed, but uh, that airplanes are very very airline travel is very very safe, and that is correct. I mean, statistically, you just this cannot be denied. So, being afraid of flying on the airlines is sort of like being afraid of crossing the road. Um, and you would, of course, I mean, I would and do willingly send my small children. I've got small children and older children. I well, say, get on the airplane, no problem, whatever. We'll go. No problem. I don't even, I don't think about it. Like who's flying the airplane when I'm not flying the airplane, you know, who's, who's in front of me. Fine. And that, a lot of them are not very smart people, but the system is so monitored and, and dependent on teamwork and training and this and that, that it turns out to be very, very safe. And it's become that way, partly largely through engineering, which starting, starting with the advent of the jet engine in the 1960s and, the airplane, the, the job got more and more boring and more and more safe, right? So mm. um, that's number one. It doesn't take much to fly one of these airplanes. And 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 you got two guys or women, a man and woman, whoever, who can do it in the front. That's number one. Number two, if you, if you look at the, the thing that seems to scare people the most from my casual observation and conversation, you know, around the dinner table, it's turbulence, right? Yeah. And I know that dominates in a terrible way the lives of airline pilots. They go around, they tiptoe around uh, uh, the, the the passengers' fear of turbulence. It's terrible because th they only have one life, and the passengers' threshold for turbulence is ridiculous. The airplanes <laughs> can handle a whole lot more turbulence than the passengers can. There's no problem with turbulence. When I get in severe turbulence, and I had a job, my last job was flying and hunting severe weather, right? So going into severe turbulence and other forms of severe weather on purpose oh. for a few years, I did that. Oh. And uh, I, I was transitioning to journalism. But, um, yeah, you know, we hunted the worst weather nationwide in the U.S., uh, nationwide, and flew into it for days on end. And... Um, um, for technical reasons, it was a job. But point is, we were flying into conditions that no airliner ever goes into ever, ever. Uh, they, they, you, they get a few little bumps, which would be not even worth t thinking about it for a pilot. And people are writing letters to the senator and the congressman. I mean, they think they're dying. That's a big problem, and, and it's totally unnecessary. The airplanes are extraordinarily strong. And the, the, to give you an example, we would fly into turbulence um, that would, is so rough that you couldn't see the instrument panels, right? It's shaking so hard. Um, oh and God. also that would, depending on the design of the seatbelt and so forth, would bruise your thighs. You know, you have a shoulder harness too, but you get, you come away with it from it bruised, physically bruised. The airplane it didn't care. It's fine. But... Tell that to the passengers. So if there's one thing you can say very specific uh, other than check the statistics, it's safe globally and safe for a reason. And, and then you can say very specifically, learn about turbulence. You know, don't be afraid of turbulence. That's, <laughs> uh, that one more thing. I, I had an assignment from Vanity Fair I, after the Atlantic was working Vanity Fair they came up with the idea of sending me to find the worst airline in the world and fly with it. Oh boy. And I, the most unsafe airline in the world and fly with them. And they, I found them in Kinshasa. <laughs> That's a terrible Congo. assignment. <laughs> what are they doing? Trying to kill you off? It was great. No, I thought it was great. No, no, it's great. I had a great <laughs> time. And, and, and up in the cockpit of these old Soviet turboprops flying around Congo. And just oh my it was really a lot of them. But anyway, these are airlines are blacklisted, right? You can't take them anywhere out of Congo, and they crash all the time. Okay, they're not like the airlines here; they don't crash. They hardly ever crash. 
those guys, they crash them all the time. Sometimes they die. Sometimes they don't. Usually they don't die. But I went um, and, and, and I truly had a great time doing that for a few weeks with these pilots. Why? How Congo. was that a great time? You're a crazy man. <laughs> who would say yes to that? Who, who would say yes? No. How is that no, fun? I mean, the, the point is, that's how safe airplanes are. You know, they don't crash. And if they do crash, they're probably not going to kill you. And whatever, it's fine. You know, and by the way, everybody dies sometime. Oh, God. <laughs> that is of no comfort when you're up there and thinking it's this time. It's right now. Uh, yeah. But no, I, everything else children, you said. That's a different thing. What, that was a soothing bomb. I, I'm going to be thinking about that story about going into the bad weather and the, the plane can take a lot more than we allow it to. Did you know that there is one phase of sleep that almost everyone fails to get enough of? And this one phase of sleep is responsible for most of your body's daily rejuvenation, repair, controlling hunger and weight loss hormones and boosting energy. I'm talking about deep sleep. Why don't most people get enough of this one most important phase of sleep? A big reason is magnesium deficiency and over 80% of the population is deficient in magnesium. Now, before you go out and just buy any magnesium supplement, it is important to understand that most products out there only have one to two forms of magnesium, when the reality is your body needs all seven forms of this essential sleep mineral. That's where Magnesium Breakthrough comes in. Magnesium Breakthrough contains all seven forms of magnesium designed to help calm your mind and help you fall asleep, stay asleep, and wake up refreshed. Visit Mag breakthrough.com slash Megan Kelly to order now. In addition to the discount you get by using promo code Megan 10, there are always amazing gifts with purchase. You're going to love shopping at buy optimizers. Go now to magbreakthrough.com slash Megan Kelly to get your magnesium breakthrough and find out this month's gift with purchase. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.